Hello everybody. In today's video lecture we're going to take a slightly different strategy than we have in previous video lectures. Today we're going to do a little bit of a case study on supply and demand. Now the markets we're going to be looking at in today's podcast are those for two particular cars from General Motors. One car is called the Chevy Cruze and it retails at $16,720. The other car is called the Chevy Volt and it goes for six thirty-one thousand six hundred forty-five dollars Let's take a look at these two cars before we begin our economic analysis. Here's the Chevy Volt. As you can see, the Chevy Volt is a small four-door city car. The catch is that this car runs on both petrol and an electric motor. The Chevy Volt, as you see, is a fairly basic car, nothing too special, nothing too fancy, but notice the high price of over $31,000. The other car we're going to be talking about today is the Chevy Cruze. At first glance, the Chevy Cruze looks a lot like the Chevy Volt. It's a four-door city car, perfect for a family. But notice the price tag. It's almost half the price of the Chevy Volt. So in our analysis during this lesson, we're going to be examining the reasons for the differences in price between these two cars. Let's get back to our economic analysis now. To understand the disparity in the prices between these two such similar cars, we're going to have to talk about two concepts, and that's the concept of marginal benefit and marginal cost. First, let's talk about marginal benefit. Marginal benefit is another word for the demand for a product. As we have learned in previous lessons, the primary determinants of demand are factors such as the tastes of consumers, the price of related goods for the goods that are related to the product in question, um, the expectations of consumers of future prices, the incomes of consumers, the number of consumers, and so on. Even special circumstances can determine the marginal benefit or the demand for a product. Marginal cost, as we know, is another word for supply. The supply of anything is dependent on fa several factors as well, including government policy, including subsidies and taxes, the price of resources that go into the production of a product, and the different technologies available to the producers of the product, as well as the number of producers in a particular market. Once we've considered the marginal benefit and the marginal cost for the Chevy Cruze and the Chevy Volt, we should be able to conclude why one car sells for twice as much as the other. We're going to begin by discussing the marginal benefit for the Chevy Volt. Here we've drawn the demand for Chevy Volts labeled DV, which corresponds with the marginal benefit of Chevy Volt consumers. Let's compare this to the demand and the marginal benefit for Chevy Cruze consumers. I'm going to draw a demand curve further to the left in our Chevy Cruze diagram than the one I drew in the Chevy Volt diagram. Now let's consider the rationale for why demand for Chevy Cruises is lower than that for Chevy Volts. What's the difference between these two cars? Of course, the main difference is that the Chevy Volt is a plug-in hybrid. This means that people who drive Chevy Volts have to fill their tanks with gas less frequently than people who drive petrol cars, such as the Chevy Cruze. The Chevy Volt therefore has benefits, additional benefits, that are greater than, those who, than for those who drive the Chevy Cruze. The Chevy Volt allows you to save money on gas over time. In addition, it gives you status as an environmentally or eco-friendly individual, someone who's conscious about the environment, someone with a small carbon footprint, someone who cares. So the Chevy Volt has many benefits that are not enjoyed by people who drive Chevy Cruises. Therefore, demand is further to the right or greater than demand for Chevy Cruises. However, demand alone does not explain why the price of Chevy Volts is twice that of Chevy Cruises. We must also consider the marginal cost or the supply of these two cars. Let's begin our analysis of marginal cost by looking once again at the market for Chevy Volts. The Chevy Volt, as we know, is a hybrid car. It involves several new technologies that aren't widely available to automobile manufacturers, including a very advanced battery that charges an elect that I'm sorry that powers the electric motor in this car. Of course, technologies such as battery technology and plug-in hybrid technology are very costly. Therefore, General Motors faces very high costs of production for the Chevy Volt, along with any other hybrid cars that it produces. This translates to a supply curve that's very far to the left in our diagram. So the supply of Chevy Volts, due to the high manufacturing costs, or the marginal cost of production, is going to be limited. It's going to be further to the left than the supply for traditional petrol-powered cars, such as the Chevy Cruze. So we can assume that the supply of Chevy Cruzes, SC, 
is greater than or further to the right or graphically below the supply for Chevy volts. Now we've talked about both marginal cost and marginal benefit for these two cars. Since the traditional petrol car requires that people fill their gas tanks every few days and it doesn't have any environmentally friendly or eco or green appeal that the hybrid car like the Volt does, the marginal benefit to drivers will be lower for the Chevy Cruze than it is for the Chevy Volt. When considering marginal cost, we know that traditional petrol engines are lower cost, they're cheaper for General Motors to produce than the new plug-in hybrid battery-powered engines in the Chevy Volt. Therefore, the marginal cost is much greater, I'm sorry, the marginal cost is much lower for the Chevy Cruze than it is for the new Chevy Volt. Therefore, the supply of Chevy Cruises will be greater than the supply of Chevy Volts. Once we've considered both the marginal benefit and the marginal cost, we can clearly see that there will be a higher equilibrium price for the Chevy Volt than there is for the Chevy Cruze. The high marginal benefit enjoyed by consumers of the Chevy Volt helps explain why the price is so high, but so does the increased cost of production for plug-in hybrid technology. So what we end up with is a price of 31000 for Chevy Volts corresponding with the particular quantity demanded and quantity supplied and a price of only 16000 for the Chevy Cruze corresponding with its own quantity demanded and quantity supplied. So let's go back and have one more look at these two cars. Here we have the Chevy Cruze, an eco-friendly 42 mile per gallon petrol powered car for $16,720. Additionally we have the Chevy Volt which we can only assume gets much greater mileage than the Chevy Cruze because of its plug-in hybrid technology. But as we can see, the cars on the outside look almost the same. Once we've applied marginal benefit and marginal cost analysis to these two cars though, we can see clearly that the price of the Chevy Volt is going to be much higher due to the higher marginal cost of production combined with the greater marginal benefit among consumers who drive the new plug-in technology. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this video lecture helpful. Please visit my blog and my website for more video lectures and lessons on economics.